What's up everyone, welcome to Make Anything, I'm Devin, and if you follow this channel, you're probably already familiar with polypanels. This system of little snap together panels that can combine to make just about anything. I was really excited to talk about it in my last video, and I'm also really excited about the My Mini Factory competition, which is now live. There's already tons of awesome entries coming in, and I'm sure there's a lot of great ones yet to come. Now, when I announced the competition, I heard from a few people who were kind of bummed thinking that you need a 3D printer in order to enter the competition to win a 3D printer. But I'll assure you that's not the case. You can submit digital files as long as they're 3D printable and they'll be a valid entry. And as I said, I want it to be as easy as possible for everyone to make poly panels because that will only help grow the library and increase the usefulness of this system. So today's video is just gonna be a little tutorial showing you how I make some rather simple poly panels just to get you guys started and just so you can see that it doesn't have to be insanely complicated to make a poly panel. And in fact, to win the competition, it's not like I'm looking for the most complicated panel. Rather, I want something that's smart, unique, clever. Just something that blows my mind in one way or another. So it doesn't have to be super intricate, it just needs to be creative and well thought out. Being able to create different sizes of customizable storage is kind of one of my favorite uses of poly panels so far, and definitely one of the more useful ones. With just the little square panels, I was able to make a little cubby that sits on the top of my bed rest, and that lets me hold my phone or whatever next to my bed. And I also made a little deodorant holder that sits in my closet which I made with just a trapezoid and a couple squares that I stuck onto the wall with some thumbtacks. It's kind of silly, but it actually works great and it puts things right where I need them. We've also already got some cool specialty panels that help with storage, like this little pegboard panel that lets me make containers that easily stick on the pegboard. I made another one over there for my magical sword of truth. And uh, yeah, it's just really cool being able to make different size containers specifically for what you wanna hold. So today I'm gonna go through the process of making three new specialty panels that will help expand our storage options. And of course they'll be used for other things as well because that's the beauty of poly panels. So let's start out in Tinkercad, which is a nice free software for beginners. It's based in your browser. And we're gonna make a little magnetic poly panel. Should be cool. Let's do it. Cool. All right, so here we are in Tinkercad. As I mentioned, it's browser-based, so just visit tinkercad.com to get started, and you'll get right into this workspace. We're gonna start out by just importing the solid square poly panel, which you can download from my mini factory. And once that's brought into here, we can start working on it. So what I want to do here is make some little cylinders that can hold on to some 6 by 3 millimeter magnets. And the first thing I'm going to do is bring in this cylinder and I'm going to turn it into a hole, which basically means I'm measuring out the hollow space that's going to be cut out of another shape. Here we're going to make this 3 by 6 by 6 millimeters to match the magnet. Although we are making this a hole and we want to give it some clearance so that the fit isn't too tight. So we'll actually switch this to 6.2 by 6.2. So there we go, we've got our hole. And now I'll just bring in a second cylinder, which will be the actual wall around that hole. So I'll make the cylinder slightly larger at eight by eight millimeters and the height I can bring to three as well. So if I try to just drag it on top of itself, it won't align, but if I hold control or command and select both, then I can use these align tools and perfectly center them. And then when I group them, they turn into one part. That hole basically gets cut out of the cylinder. So now I have this little hollow cylinder and that's basically my little magnet holder. Now I can start aligning them onto this panel however I want. Now for this particular panel, I'm thinking of putting one magnet in each corner of the square, so four magnets. And uh, the way I'll do that is by copying this shape and pasting it, and then I'll just drag it onto each corner. 
So now I can select both of these by holding Control or Command, and then I can copy and paste both of those. Make sure to keep them aligned if we can. It's a little tricky sometimes in Tinkercad. Um, I don't know what happened to this one. It looks like the hole isn't a hole anymore. So just, just in case, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one and copy one of the other cylinders over. So now if I select all four of these, you can see the bounding box touches the sides of all the circles. So I know that they're aligned and I'm gonna group them. That way they behave as a single object. So that way I can also select the panel and then use this align tool to align that square relative to the panel. I can also drag this up a little bit until it's just intersecting with that panel. It doesn't have to be exactly three millimeters tall, just high enough of a wall to hold on to the magnet. So I think this will work just fine. So let's finish off by turning this into a single part by having everything selected and then using the group tool once again. As you can see, that turns all of them into this pink object and then we're ready to export that STL and we've got a file that's ready to print. All right, here's our panel printed out on the Snapmaker printer. It looks just like we modeled it. And that's the point of 3D printing, isn't it? So I'll just go ahead and drop the magnets in there. And from one corner to the next, I'll flip this set of magnets. That way we have them facing north, south, north, south, which basically just means we'll be able to connect every magnetic panel to every other magnetic panel. And as you saw, the fit isn't super tight. So I'm actually gonna add a little dab of E6000 glue and use that to really stick these into place. All right, there we go. We now have magnetic poly panels. All right, let's make something. So add a few squares and we've suddenly got a little pen holder to put on the fridge. Or why don't we double that up so that we can hold the weight of some spice. A little spice holder. Nice, spice is nice. Of course, we can also have the panels interact with each other, so we can create some kind of modular system that snaps to itself in that super satisfying way that magnets do. Yeah, there's a lot of ideas that could come from this. Let me know if you've got any cool suggestions. So that was panel number one made in Tinkercad, but if we want to get a little more advanced, we might want to take things into Fusion 360. So I'm going to visit makeanything.design slash polypanels I'll scroll all the way to the bottom to find the resources, and we can download some Fusion 360 native files from there. So let's start by taking a look at the Snap Connector file. We'll click that link, and that'll take us to a web preview of the file. And from there, there's this little drop down menu for downloading. We can download as a Fusion 360 archive or plenty of other file types. It'll ask you to put in your email, and then it'll email you a download link but uh, I already have these on my computer, so let's just go right into Fusion 360 and open that up. So here's the file. I'm gonna go ahead and save it as a new part right away, just to make sure I don't save over that snap file. And we're gonna make a little loop hanger, which is basically just a loop to hang panels from. So how about we start a sketch on this top surface right here of this little edge part, so that we're looking directly top down onto our snap connector. And then I'm gonna draw a line here up from the center. As you can see, the center isn't exactly lined up with the origin of the file. That's my bad, maybe I'll fix that at some point. But anyways, you can see the center in that sketch that's included in this file. And so I'm working off of that. So we have the center line. Now let's go ahead and draw a circle centered on that center line and make the hole for our loop. We'll hit D to get the dimension tool Set that dimension to one inch, which ends up being 25.4 millimeters. And then I'll select that line and hit O to create an offset. So we'll do a six millimeter offset here so that it basically lines up with that edge. Next, I'll hit L to get my line tool going and we'll just draw some lines straight up from these corner points. One and two. Let's right click on this and make sure it's vertical. All right, there we go. There's our basic loop. I could add more dimension here to make sure that this is fully defined, 
But you know, for a simple panel like this, it's not really necessary. I'll just hit extrude, select all of those profiles, extrude it down, and make it match the width of the panel. Then we can do some little details, a fillet on these little inside corners to make it more smooth. We'll fillet these little edges just so that they're not too pointy. And well, you know how much I love fillets. Let's add a few more on these top edges just to make everything nice and smooth and friendly. We'll give that the same 0.9 millimeter radius that the default poly panels have. And I'll also do another one down here at the bottom, a chamfer and then a fillet on top of that top edge. There we go. Now we have a nice smoothed out rounded little loop that we can connect to other panels and that'll make it easy to hang things. So we'll just right click and save that as an STL and now let's go ahead and print that out again. Some quick construction and hey, we've got ourselves a little bit of a weird looking clothes hanger, you know just in case you need another one of those. Or better yet, why don't we attach that to some of these fabric panels I made and we've got ourselves another nice little basket. Or maybe we can connect it to the magnet panels we just made and now we've got a super quick swapping system for these little cube containers. All right, that wasn't too bad, was it? And I've also got the basic shapes available for you to download, the pentagon, square, triangle, and rhombus. So that makes it even easier to stay consistent with the polypanel system, since you can just keep that base shape and add whatever you want on top of that. As you can see, we have the whole timeline down here, so you can go forward and back. You can suppress things if you want to alternate the design. In this case, I wanted to create a quick twist container polypanel based on this pentagon. So I just projected the one edge here and I offset that again so that we have this one millimeter wall. I can exit that sketch and start another sketch based on this plane that I created right in the center. And with that one, we'll just draw a line from that center point straight up. Let's make it 120 millimeters. And then I can go into the sweep command select that wall, select that path, and give it a twist of 45 or why not 90 degrees? Whoops, oh no. Never do that guys. Always, always backspace. Oh, oh boy. Okay, we're safe. Let's try that again. Create, sweep, select the profile, select the path, give it that 90 degree twist and we have the outer part of a twist container. Now we can actually go back in the timeline before I did that sweep, copy and paste that body, and then we'll have two so that on the second one, we can do the same exact twist, just using a slightly smaller pentagon sketch. I'll have a 0.5 millimeter clearance between the walls of this twist container. Now I know I rushed through this last panel, but I really just wanted to show you how you can use the existing base polygons and add on top of those to make your specialty panels. If you're interested in a more detailed introduction into Fusion 360, you can take a look at my How to Make Anything playlist, which goes through from the very beginning. Here's the outer one printed out on my CR10S Pro. And here's the inner printed on the JG Aurora A5, both with this beautiful polyalchemy elixir filament. It's just got an incredible shine. And here it is, all nestled together. That satisfyingly smooth twist container. What exactly I'll connect this to? Well, I, I can't say for sure, but I just couldn't resist. That just does not get old. <laughs> all right, guys, there you have it. We made three poly panels in no time at all. I hope that shows you that you don't need to be an engineer or a designer by trade in order to get into 3D design and 3D printing. It's a super fun hobby, so I encourage you all to do it. I know you're kind of interested because you're on this channel, right? You made it this far. As I mentioned, that poly panel competition is still going. I hope this video served as some creative fuel 
If it's before May 15th, you can still enter the first part of the competition. The second part goes for another three weeks after that, so check out the link in the description to learn more. If all of that is already passed, hello future. I hope the robot overlords are treating you nicely. I hope you're not confined in a virtual reality prison. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's it for today. Leave me some comments. Let me know what I should do with this twist container poly panel and the magnets and the hangers. Subscribe if you want to see what this thing is going to turn into. But until then, this is all. This is that. That is this. This is Make Anything. I'm Devin. Stay inspired.